is a hot day for this. Okay, so today I am going to be talking you through my Nemo Dragonfly one person tent. I have taken this on the West Highland Way, half of the coast to coast, and some of the Southwest Coastal Path. I've set it up a lot of times now by this point. Um, I'd say about 20 to 30 times. So I think I'm gonna have enough experience with it to talk through it, some of the pros and cons. Generally, I do actually really like this tent, so there aren't gonna to be too many cons to it, to be honest, but let's go. I've decided I'm gonna look like a total dude doing this in these glasses because it's just so bright here and I'm probably gonna get a bit of a tan slash burn as well. <laughs> It's so hot today. Okay, so the weight of this tent is 978 grams, excluding the pegs. The eight pegs that come with the tent are 142 grams, and then the footprint is 195 grams, bringing it to a total of 1.315 kilos. This tent is gonna set you back 419 odd pounds including the footprint so the tent is 374 and the footprint is around about 49.99 it is a pricier tent it has one vestibule here it's a side opening which i love by the way and the vestibule is 10 square feet just to give you a rough guide of the size inside of the vestibule. In terms of space, the vestibule happily fits my bag in it, it fits my shoes in it, and it fits my hiking poles in it, everything. It, it would fit all my gear in it so happily. I bring some of my gear inside the tent so I've got extra space. Usually it's almost a quarter to sometimes a half of the vestibule that I've got free to do, I don't know, cartwheels or whatever roly polies in, whilst my bag and everything sits in the other side. The inside floor space is 203 square feet. It's pretty roomy inside, that is another pro for me, and it gives you a few inches either side, at the top and the bottom. I can fit a lot of my stuff in there with me when I go in. The height is pretty impressive, I've got a few inches above my head. I'm five foot six, five foot five, not really entirely sure. <laughs> Depends if I'm slouching or not. Also, because of the, the crossbar at the top of the tent, sideways, it gives you a, a nice feeling of room either side of your head. You're not going up to a point and feeling uh, caved in by that, like con constricted at all. This is a like very generously spaced tent. It's a pretty easy to set up tent. I probably have this down in about three to four minutes and that's me just 
being leisurely about it, not rushing. I could probably do it in under that time if I wanted to, but it really, really helps me to have the color coded. You can match the footprint hooks to the poles, and then you can match all of those to the straps on the rainfly, which makes it super easy to know which round, way round everything needs to be and just saves time in that thought process of am I have I got everything the right way around it's freestanding so you can use with or without the fly it's got a really nice mesh which gives a certain amount of privacy but also allows you to be able to stargaze and feel like you're in nature and not completely meshed inside of a tent. The floor feels strong. I probably could have used it the whole time that I have used it without having the footprint underneath, but I just like to have that little added protection there. Um, it's an expensive tent, so I don't want to risk tears when I don't have to, so I always do use the footprint, but it does feel pretty solid. I have never had a leak or a waterproofing issue with this tent ever hands down no issues with water bouncing up and getting inside when it's really really hard rain so that's brilliant also no no condensation issues at all with this tent like the ventilation is spot on sometimes because the ventilation is so good with the rain fly being high around the back of the tent the air is able to get through but of course, that means that you have to be kind of thoughtful when you put up the tent in terms of the wind and compromising the structure of the tent. So it's one of those that's a little bit riskier to put it up with the wind to the side of you. I know that's probably pretty unlikely that experienced people are gonna do that anyway, but just in case, you know, the floor's uneven, you might think, oh, screw it, in this direction, it, it's better for the evenness of the floor for me to put my tent down but if the wind's hitting the side of this tent it's a bit more likely for it to lean um, that can also be affected by the pole at the top of the the tent the cross the cross pole because it literally just sits on the main frame of the tent and so if it's blown it can move to the side sometimes and again affect the structure There's some cows here and they're not very happy right now. But I did realize something kind of cool, and this is a bit of a user error on my part. <laughs> on the inside of the rain fly, there are some tiny little Velcro hoops to secure to the main pole structure of the tent to stop the rain fly slipping over to the side and then the whole tent leaning to one side when the wind's especially gusty. And I didn't realize that for the longest time. I only discovered them when I was last hiking and I thought, what are those? Oh, right, okay. <laughs> so that has actually helped the integrity and the structure of the tent so much, which is obviously why they're there. But again, it can still be a little bit wonky and sometimes if it's especially windy, I'll wake up and I'll have to um, edge the poles over just to make the tent re-straightened. But overall, like it's pretty good in windy and stormy weather brilliant in the rain which is fantastic for england of course because it's always raining here i think that it could do with one more line here to stake it out just to help it be more of a solid structure also it can be the, these are tall i mean i haven't done them fantastically today mainly because the ground's hard but these can be super tall and <laughs> um, these can be super tall but this is often much more difficult to get tall I think it could do with another line it could be annoying in the night because it can be a bit flappy another niggle is with the zip now I really really like that there's this velcro bit here that keeps it all neat and tidy and looks after the zip so it's not constantly out in the rain and blah 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 but this gets caught in the zip 
like there's no tomorrow it's always caught in the zip <laughs> especially when you're inside and you're trying to get out because you can't hold it to the side because you can't quite see it so i'm forever untangling it from the other side that's kind of annoying i really really like the pocket placements in this tent i really like that they're so generous with the pockets the one to the right hand side of me leans slightly so it, you can put a bottle in it which is great i just i love the ergonomics of that the, the placement of it, it the bottle sits in it really really neatly and i love that there's a pocket above your head specifically designed for your headlamp it's diff it's a diffuser pocket and it diffuses the light of your headlamp so you're not having it shine really really brightly on you and instead you've got a bit more of a nice ambient light i just think that that's fab i love this being a side entry um, i'm not really very interested in having a bottom entry tent i i just don't care for it i just don't care for it i can lay on my side and cook in the vestibule i can chill out like a big old slob and eat laying down on my sleeping pad like i'm all about a side entry it's also kind of easier to just squat my little butt out the side and and have a emergency pee in the night if i want to you can also pin up both sides of the vestibule so right over here and this one even has two points to pin it up. You can keep it staked with one stake here and just have a slight shadow if maybe the sun's coming from this direction or you can completely unstake it and roll it all the way up back up to there so it's real open and you're out in nature. It's great. I actually initially wanted the two-person model of this tent. <laughs> I just wanted to have tons of space. I wanted to have my bag in with me. I liked it. It has two vestibules and two exits either side, so you don't have to worry about which way around you're placing it. And if you do camp with two people, like having two exits is a big deal. Having an exit your side and whoever you're camping with side, like that's awesome. You don't have to climb over each other. I just think that's really great. And it's pretty generous because the tent isn't filthy amounts of money, although it is a pretty higher ended priced tent. To have the two person, it would be adding on another 309 grams with the weight of the footprint that would bring the two person version to 1.624 grams in total kind of heavy not too bad for a two person to be honest i probably would go for it if it if it uh, gave me that extra space and just to bring everything inside with me just because i like hoarding things like me like a little golem in there it's an extra 59 pounds so it brings the total to 478 for a two-person tent again it's it's on the pricier side um that's including the extra price for the footprint as well as the extra price for the tent so that's footprint and tent together 478 thank you for watching everyone i just wanted to leave you guys to make a decision about this tent based on the things that i have said in this video rather than come to a conclusion on your behalf as always please like comment and subscribe or interact with this video in any way if you liked it here is a peaceful scene of cows.